Hi, are you a project manager wondering if ChatGPT can make your life a bit easier or help you accomplish more? If so, you are in the right place. Hello and welcome to this short installment of the Advisacon webinar series. We're so glad you could join us today for an introduction to ChatGPT for project managers. Today's presentation is brought to you by Advisacon, work management consultants that help you leverage technology and methodology to help you maximize your impact, productivity, and purpose. My name is David Hogan, and I am the VP of Technology Services and Engineering at Advisacon, and I will be your guide for today. These days, there are a lot of people who feel that they are expected to deliver more in less time and do it with fewer people. So today we are going to explore how you can go about hiring ChatGPT to be your intern or project assistant to help you do some of the heavy lifting in your role as a project leader. In the few minutes we have today, we'll briefly discuss what ChatGPT is and some fundamentals about how to use it. We'll also demonstrate just a few examples of using it to develop project documents and to assist with project tasks. What is ChatGPT? Well, it's an artificial intelligence system. More specifically, a generative artificial intelligence system, GPT standing for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. ChatGPT describes it right here in its own words. It says this nifty form of machine learning allows computers to generate all sorts of new and exciting content, from music and art to entire virtual worlds. And it's not just for fun. Generative IT has plenty of practical uses too, like creating new product designs and organizing business processes. In fact, it's even capable of generating poetry. There are some limitations to what ChatGPT can do, and so these things you'll need to keep in mind as you're using it. First, like some human beings we know, it does not have common sense. It doesn't actually access the internet, so it's not a search engine. It's actually a collection of data that has been processed through AI learning models, and it can't provide anything that is relatively current in nature. The body of knowledge that has been processed through it at the current time runs through about September of 2021. So anything uniquely current after that time is not something that can be processed through ChatGPT. It does have some issues with some complex mathematical problems. It does generate grammatical errors and typos because it is a collection of things that human beings have written and put together. And it can provide biased or even wrong answers. So it's important to think about ChatGPT as being an intern, meaning that it can do a lot of the heavy lifting and putting things together for you. But at the end of the day, you do need to do your own quality assurance and review the work just like you would uh, for an intern on your staff. So some ChatGPT fundamentals. First, using ChatGPT, you can access ChatGPT through their website at chat.openai.com. Or of course, you can go to any search engine and just look for ChatGPT. When you arrive at their page, you'll be asked to create an account. And once you sign into the account, you'll be able to start giving it prompts or questions. As it says here, the system is a chat bot. It operates in response to prompts. The quality of your prompts will dramatically affect the quality of your answers. Some things to keep in mind. First, context. You do want to provide context such as a persona. For example, I am a project manager for a company that does this kind of work uh, in this part of the world uh, with this kind of customers. Anything that will help it zero in on the best answer for you. You want to utilize natural language. The system, of course, was trained on natural language, things that were written and spoken by human beings. And so using natural language is a healthy way to get, again, the information that you want. You do want to be specific to avoid ambiguity or broad open questions. Be concise. For example, write a 200 word promotion for a project for a product that does the following. And then, of course, along the way, you can test and revise your prompts, making changes as needed, again, to zero in on what you're looking for or what feels right to you. You know, sometimes when you play that game Pictionary, you'll have 
people would get started and they'll say, well, you know, the, the first word starts with this or the second word starts with this. And sometimes you find you get really lost and sometimes they wave their hands and say, you know, start over. And sometimes that's the best thing to do with chat GPT because it is learning information from each prompt that you give it. And if you find you went down a rabbit hole, sometimes it's just better to start your inquiry over again. Some ideas for prompts. Uh, there's all types of things that you can do to interact with ChatGPT, and these are just some examples. For example, you can uh, give it a white paper or paste the contents of white paper in and say, summarize this white paper for me, or give me advice on various subjects like uh, career planning or financial planning, things such as that. Um, or give me a training plan for a marathon for a person that has bad knees, and it can help you find answers to that challenge. Um, jokes about specific topics. Maybe you're writing a speech or you're going to a party uh, with a bunch of people who have a common interest that you know nothing about. Uh, it also is able to write programming code of many different types. For example, you could ask it to write a JavaScript that does the following and give it some examples of what you want that scripting to do. Tell it to write a promotion for a product that has certain features and it can create marketing copy for you or even a sales script. You can give it a table of information and say, analyze these metrics, for example, to improve website conversion rates or help me brainstorm by giving me five ideas for a title for my most recent blog post. And there are certain recurring tasks that you might have. You might have been asked to uh, help out with the social group that you associate with and you want to create an agenda for a monthly meeting for your polo club. Um, or uh, working with a, your family restaurant, you might say, uh, write a follow-up text to people who order a Hawaiian pizza that did not buy anything to drink. And it can give you ideas and information around all these and many, many more possibilities. All right, so next we're going to jump into a demonstration of ChatGPT and just cover a few types of tasks that a project manager might encounter in their day-to-day -day work and just show you how fabulous it is and how capable it is of helping to lighten your workload. All right, so here we are at the interface for chat GPT. It's uh, pretty straightforward, so uh, nothing overly complicated. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, we can tell it to uh, start a new chat. And down here at the bottom of the page, we can write in the prompt that we want to utilize for that chat. And we'll just give you a couple examples, again, of things project managers might want to do. One of the things that you might have to do as a project manager, for example, is to create a project charter. And it's a pretty big piece of heavy lifting. And uh, so you might want this to give you some help with that. And let's say that I've been approached about creating a project charter for a project to create a new art museum that showcases um, cartoons from the 1950s. So I write a prompt here that says, create a sample project charter for creating an art museum that showcases cartoons from the 1950s in America. And as you'll note, it's going through and it's actually taking information that is in my context. It's creating a structure for the project charter that I can use. And uh, it's quite capable and it's saving me a lot of time at this point, uh, because this is the kind of thing you hate to uh, build from scratch if you don't have to. And so we appreciate it again, doing the heavy lifting. All right. And so again, just one example of something we might do if we wanted to, we could again, refine our prompt by coming back up here to the top. You notice there's an edit button and I could rephrase this and then come back to the bottom and tell it here to regenerate. And it would do exactly that if I wanted to. Sometimes as a project manager, I'm getting ready to figure out what the project entails and I want to develop a work breakdown structure or WBS. And so I might write a prompt, something like create a work breakdown structure for a septic system replacement project because I'm about to figure out what I need to do for that. So again, I, it explains up here at the top a little bit about a, what a break, breakdown structure is and it goes through and creates a work breakdown structure that is specific to this kind of project based on the data that has been collected in its database. Absolutely awesome. Of course, another thing that project managers have to do from time to time 
is create a project schedule. And so we don't want to have to do that from scratch. So I'm going to go here and open another chat and tell it to create a project plan in tabular form for a website development project that includes an online store. And you'll notice it's walking through, giving some description about that, what it's going to do. And it gives me a breakdown or a table of a project schedule. Now, in this case, I want to add a few things to that. So I'm going to say, well, maybe that's not quite enough detail for me in this particular case. So I'm going to tell it to add some additional columns. In this case, I'm going to ask for um, a column that has a place for a budget and a percentage complete for each of the tasks. Or I could say add uh, start dates and end dates to each task and tell it to regenerate there. And now it's creating a table and adding the additional information that I asked for. Again, it's a sample, you know, based on that particular type of project schedule, but again, a good place for me to start so I don't have to start from whole cloth. All right. One of the things that some project managers uh, don't love to do is to write business cases. It always involves, I don't know, so much detail. Uh, I don't love writing those kind of things. And so I love having an assistant to help me do that. And so I'm going to be as specific as I can here and give it a prompt to say, write a business case for implementing a zero trust security model for our computer system for a business that has offices in three states with 100 employees who use uh, both mobile devices and computers. You'll notice as I ask it to generate that, again, it has a, a very structured uh, particular business case. It's adding all the details that I'm looking for, the nuances uh, created by the criteria that I gave it. And again, uh, saving my brain so much thinking time but uh, remember that we use this again as we would an intern. So we do need to go back and fill in things like our, the name of our company and check it for accuracy and make sure that it's included all of the things you know, that we would be concerned about as a project manager. But again, giving us a great assist. Another thing that we do as project managers is we have to sometimes build a matrix that identifies uh, what members of the project team, you know, have what responsibility. Uh, one form of that is something we call a RACI matrix or a RACI chart. And I'm going to tell it to create a RACI matrix in the table format for an electronic medical record system implementation project. Maybe we're working at a hospital or for a medical practice and implementing a system that does that. And I want to create the RACI matrix for that project. And so I just enter that prompt in there with as much specific information as I can. And it goes through and does its best to determine based on those uh, criteria what might be included in that RACI chart. And it also gives a handy legend here at the bottom that tells you what the acronym means and how these things are categorized in the matrix. I love it. Another thing that we commonly have to do as project managers is we have to uh, do a lot of communicating. Things like writing emails or writing agendas or taking notes from meetings and distributing them. And ChatGPT is fantastic at doing those things. And it actually can write at very formal levels or very informal levels. And so uh, you have to love it. One thing that many people who use Microsoft Teams do, especially in uh, client meetings and team meetings is they will record um, the meetings. And one of the things that we can do is we can put a prompt in here that says write like a, a bullet point summary of the following meeting transcript. And then I can just, after this colon here, I just pasted in uh, the actual transcription from the recording of the meeting. And of course, this is just a sample, but I tell it to send that message. And at the bottom here, you'll I see a bullet point description, essentially of what happened at the meeting. Fantastic. I could have done other things. I could have said, uh, 
create a summary of the action items from the meeting or create a summary of the decisions or votes that were taken at the meeting. And then I can copy and paste these into an email and send them out. Uh, many times when I write meeting notes, they're not always well organized right at the beginning. And so I found that ChatGPT can uh, read through my mess and organize the notes in the same way that an intern or an assistant that I might have would do. And again, just saves me uh, loads and loads of time. So thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you find this information helpful. We want to invite you to visit us at advisacon.com. And of course, we invite you to reach out to our team to find out how we can be of assistance to you. We do look forward to seeing you again at a future webinar and hope you have an outstanding day.